haven't filmed here in a while. Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, this is Say DIY, and the reason why we're filming over here today is it's time to do another computer project. Uh, for those that are new to the channel, uh, my computer, I built it about three to four years ago, and it's named Reptar, and I love it very, very much. But to be honest, in the past couple months, I haven't been the best computer owner. I haven't been uh, following my own advice. My storage situation is a bit yikes, uh, whether it be the actual storage that I'm running every single day or my backups even. So I need to just kind of get that all taken care of. So basically this is going to be a multi-part series where I first do a fresh install of Windows 10. I'm also going to do a BIOS update. And the way that you do that with most modern, modern motherboards is you just download the most recent BIOS that's in this little file and you just throw it on a freshly formatted USB drive. And then what you'll do is you'll just stick in your PC, boot into the BIOS, the UEFI, and then update the BIOS. And there's like a kind of a little like GUI way to follow it. Then I'm also going to set up a Raspberry Pi to run Open Media Vault, uh, which is um, kind of what it sounds like. It's a media server OS, but you can also use it for network attached backups. Uh, and that's one thing I'm going to be doing with it. And then I'm also going to be doing some actual media server stuff with it as well. And then I also, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to do this or not, but I've been considering swapping out the thermal paste on my CPU as well. Not because I've been seeing like temp differences really, but just I kind of want to see if it makes a difference at all. It's more of like a curiosity thing for me. And I'm also going to be running some benchmarks to see if a fresh install of Windows does make a difference uh, with your computer performance. Uh, so I did run some benchmarks um, last night as I was getting prepped for this whole thing. Uh, and I did notice that my benchmark levels had gone down a bit since the last time I benchmarked my PC about two years ago. So I'm curious if it's because of the OS getting a bit like clogged up or if it's just the age of my components. So we'll kind of test that out at the end of all this and see how that went. So this isn't going to necessarily be like a step by step how to do it, but I'm going to give you some tips on what helped me uh, to be able to kind of do this uh, successfully or I mean, it could go unsuccessfully too. It could be a warning, like don't do this. But a couple things I did to prep that I think are really handy um, is obviously like one of the things that really prevented me from, from doing this for a while was I was worried about license keys and losing stuff for software. I think that's kind of the biggest risk whenever you go to a new computer in general or anything like that is making sure you have your product key, your license key, uh, and especially when you have a PC that you built yourself um, the Windows license key can get really tricky because you didn't necessarily write it down and stuff like that. So I looked into ways to extract your product keys like from your computer. So the program I used, uh, cause recommended by a few reputable sources was Bellarc Advisor. And basically what it does is it kind of does like a health check on your system and it can also grab product keys from different softwares, including like Microsoft Office, um, which is kind of notorious with the most recent versions for really hiding that product key. Uh, your Windows 10 product key, which you'll, you'll need. At first, it seemed like it was a really sketchy idea to like run that on your computer. So I did like a lot of research to make sure it wasn't like some scam thing that was gonna like steal all my stuff and infect my PC. But it's not, it's like legit and it's pretty cool. If for no other reason to get that Windows 10 um, product key and there's like a couple other ways you can do it too, but th where I also need some other things, that's what I chose and I'll link that down in the description. Now the one thing about um, Office 2013 and Office 2016, which was the last time that Microsoft offered a way to just buy Office and own it uh, before going to the subscription model of Office 365, they really hid the product key. Like you really, you can't find it in the OS, even in the registry. Uh, you can, even with the tool I use, you can only get the last five digits of the product key, which is so annoying. One thing you can then do though, is once you have those five digits, you can then search your various things uh, to see if you have it written down somewhere on your computer. And I did, I totally did. In fact, I still had the installer that's how I found mine. You can also like search your email as well. Uh, and then I was also concerned about my other production software that I use. So I wanted to make sure that was all set. So I definitely recommend doing all that before 
you do anything else. Do all your clerical annoying work. It's gonna take a while, but it's worth it because once you get up and running, hopefully everything will be all set. And then to get the Windows 10 installation media, you're gonna need a USB drive again. They recommend at least eight gigs. I think most people probably have like a four to, gig four to eight gigabyte stick hanging around these days since they kind of give USB drives out like candy everywhere. So you should have one lying around. And then if you just go to the Microsoft site, which I'll link down in the description, you'll be able to download um, the creation tool for bootable media for Windows 10. Uh, they give you a couple options when you're going through it. You select like the version you want and stuff. You don't need your product key at this time to make the media. Um, and then you can either get the ISO, which then you'll need a tool like Rufus to make it, or you can just use their built-in tool to make the USB um, bootable drive. I did that even though I know other ways to do it and in my professional life I always do the ISO and then use Rufus and blah 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 blah. But um, I decided to just do the like brainless way just so I knew it was going to be all set and I wouldn't have to worry about it. So I'm basically ready to go. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to unplug all my drives from the system. I'm also going to unplug all my USB peripherals except for my keyboard and mouse. The reason why I'm doing that is I've imaged enough computers in my uh, professional life to know that stupid little things can mess with operating system installations. So that's a tip I have for you. I've had like a stupid like a uh, wireless receiver for something cause all sorts of problems. So uh, just keep that in mind if you ever do this yourself. So once you do that, I'm gonna do the BIOS update. Uh, then I'm gonna have a stiff drink and then I'm going to actually do the, the fresh Windows installation on the new disc. Shutting down, it's make me install updates. All right, so we've plugged in the BIOS drive. Now we're gonna power it up with no bootable drive. So we hit delete to go into the UFI, instant flash. It's gonna be different on every single motherboard, but so it found um, things. So now when I click update, it's going to start the BIOS update. Uh, so here we go. Are you sure you wanna update the UFI? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay, and now it's it's going, and we'll see. Now would be a really bad time for a power outage. Okay, now we're gonna reboot, see if it worked. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, we're we're good. We got into the UFI at least. Uh, so my CPU times to idle are like. 34C, it used to be cooler, it used to be down like 29C, so I think I will, I think I will do the thermal paste, just to see, I'm just, I'm just curious. So it appears our BIOS update was successful for the motherboard, which is good. I've been able to reboot into the UFI a couple of times, so now I've just plugged in my bootable um, drive for Windows 10, and also hooked up my new SSD in the back of the PC. And right now the PC is just kind of open because there's gonna be a lot of stuff moving around. We got the move where certain drives are placed and everything like that. Um, so now we're going to go into the boot menu on the UEFI. We're going to choose the boot option to be the USB uh, and then we'll kind of see if it works. So basically I'm gonna exit the UEFI, um, not hit delete to go back into it uh, and it should boot into the USB. And then it's during the Windows installation that you're gonna select the SSD as the target for the installation. Uh, and then after that finishes up, we will have to go back into the UFI uh, to change the boot selection to make sure that it selects the um, our new Windows 10 installation on the SSD. So let's do that. Exit, save changes and exit. Yes, I'm sure. So now we're just gonna watch and see what happens. We're booting into Windows, so it works. So now we're going to do the whole installation and see what happens. And I've unplugged all my other drives right now just to make sure nothing gets messed up, even from power. Everything's unplugged, uh, and then we'll kind of like revisit everything after that. Because we're probably gonna have to go back into the old Windows installation to retrieve some stuff anyway, so yeah. Here we go. All right, so that went a lot faster than I thought it would. Uh, the installation uh, to the SSD was like 
probably less than 10 minutes, uh, and then getting everything all set so that I could boot into Windows to the desktop was also super fast. Uh, I will say that uh, Windows really pushes you to use an online Microsoft account with your computer. Um, even to the point that like on the third time you're like, no, this is what I want my account to be on this machine. They're like, or you, even better, you could use the online version. I'm like, no, uh, but whatever, they, there's ways just don't get pressured by Microsoft to, you can still do your thing. Um, so we're here, we're in the desktop. Uh, up next is gonna be a lot of like really boring installations and everything like that, but everything looks good to go. And uh, yeah, so just to recap what we did today, um, updated the BIOS, did a clean installation of Windows to a fresh SSD, um, with everything unplugged while we did that so nothing would get messed up and now we're gonna install everything. So the next part of the series is gonna be that Raspberry Pi OMV installation. Uh, I'll probably walk through the steps on that and get everything kind of set up how I want to. Then after that, we're looking at a thermal paste swap and some benchmarks. So, uh, super nerdy. I hope this is helpful for you just in general, whether you use Windows, Linux, Mac OS, whatever. Um, and just like making sure your computer's in good health storage wise. In this day and age where everything is digital, basically, uh, it's really important to make sure all your stuff's in good shape. Uh, make sure you have your product keys, very important. So if you like this video, uh, toss me a thumbs up, leave any questions or comments uh, down below. Find me on social media, links are down in the description. Thank you for watching and consider subscribing for more content like this and the upcoming videos in this series. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.